Good morning and welcome to St. Stephen's Episcopal Church in Irwin, North Carolina. Today we celebrate the fourth Sunday after Easter, otherwise known as Good Shepherd Sunday. My name is Father Franklin Colbert, and I am the celebrant for today. Our service begins on page 355 in the Book of Common Prayer. But before we start, we have one announcement to make. And that is to acknowledge that the flowers on the altar today are given to the glory of God in loving memory of her mother, Mrs. Wanda Daines, by Linda Mackenzie. Hallelujah! Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Almighty God, to you all hearts are opened, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Apostle. 
rules. The rulers, elders, and scribes assembled in Jerusalem with Annas the high priest, Caiaphas, John, and Alexander, and all who were of the high priestly family. When they had made the prisoners stand in their midst, they inquired, by what power or by what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers of the people and elders, if we are questioned today because of a good deed done to someone who was sick and are asked how this man has been healed, let it not be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that this man is standing before you in good health by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders. It has become the cornerstone. There is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among mortals by which we must be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks to God. The psalm for today is Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in one. He makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. He revives my soul and guides me along the right pathways for his name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You spread a table before me in the presence of those who trouble me. You have anointed my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely your goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Our second reading is a reading from the first letter of John. We know love by this, that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. How does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses to help? Little children, let us love not in word or speech, but in truth and action. And by this, we will know that we are from the truth and will reassure our hearts before him whenever our hearts condemn us. For God is greater than our hearts, and he knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have boldness before God, and we receive from him whatever we ask, because we obey his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is his commandment, that we should believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another, just as he has commanded us. All who obey his commandments abide in him, and he abides in them. And by this we know that he abides in us, by the spirit that he has given us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Dear Father, how can I O oh Lord, that I might boldly proclaim thy holy gospel.
The Lord be with you, and also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, according to John, chapter 15, beginning at the first verse. And that day, Jesus said to his disciples, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The high hand, who is not the shepherd, and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. And the hired hand runs away because the hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me, just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I offer the sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ our Lord. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be always acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. Amen. Good morning, Church. Today is Good Shepherd Sunday, and it is today when the Gospel readings from St. John's Gospel chapter 10, verses 11 through 28, as well as the 23rd Psalms, are read throughout Christendom. In both readings, we find the central theme of Jesus' saying, 
that he is the good shepherd who willingly and knowingly lays down his life for the sheep. The sheep being us, the people of God. Jesus distinguishes himself between the good shepherd and the hired hand, who does not have an invested interest or relationship with the sheep. At the first sign of danger, the hired hand flees, leaving the sheep unprotected. The good shepherd has a relationship with his sheep, and the sheep has a relationship with the good shepherd. The good shepherd also has a relationship with God the Father, so much so that even if the good shepherd is killed by the enemy in the process of protecting the sheep, death cannot keep him separated from his sheep. I believe that this message is timely since the readings from the past three Sundays have to do with Jesus' death and resurrection from the grave and his various appearances to his disciples in an attempt to reassure them that he had truly risen from the grave, that he was not a ghost or an aberration, but truly resurrected in the flesh. His empowering of them with the authority and the power of the Holy Spirit invested in him by his Father for them to remain focused and to spread the gospel message throughout the world. The challenge for the Good Shepherd of today, that is, pastors and priests, as well as the church, is to remain focused and true to the call and ministry of the gospel of the Good Shepherd. Now more than ever is the need to be able to distinguish the message of the Good Shepherd and between the hired hands of today whose message is not one of peace and love, rather one of disunity and discord. They have abused their authority and trust as shepherds, and rather than protect and feed the sheep, they feed off the sheep by betraying the trust and the love of the sheep. Their ambition and purpose are not those of the Good Shepherd who preach love, repentance, and forgiveness. Rather, seeking personal ambition and selfish gain at the expense of the loving sheep. I have read the 23rd Psalm on several occasions in my life, both as a priest, pastor, and as an individual. And each time a different message jumps out at me. This week, 
my family suffered the loss of one of our members due to the COVID-19 virus. He was a newlywed, only 36 years of age, a father, husband, brother, son, nephew, and cousin. He had a quiet disposition about himself and was loved by his wife, daughter, siblings, and family. He was passionate about blowing the saxophone. His gospel music and ministry and he enjoyed good cooking. However, his life was short-lived as a result of COVID-19. Like many others who have lost loved ones as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic, my family is grieving our lost of a loved one. What comforts me in this loss and tragedy is knowing that my nephew had a personal relationship with the Good Shepherd. A question that must now be asked to both you and I. What is our relationship with this Good Shepherd. Given all that is happening around us today, don't you think that it is time to examine our relationship with the Good Shepherd? The Good Shepherd promises to provide all of our wants and needs to find green pastures, food, shelter, and water. He promises to revive our soul, to guide us along the right pathway and direction, and even when we are in danger, he promises never, ever to leave us alone. He uses his rod to defend us from our adversaries. And when we are out of line, he uses his staff to correct us. What blows me away and is a new revelation is that the Good Shepherd offers our enemies the same meal at the same table. He is host to both of us, allowing us to be reconciled to make peace and to find forgiveness of each other. The Good Shepherd graces me with his mercies and love and he also graces you with his mercies and love. He anoints our head with oil, even as our cup are running over. His grace is sufficient to sustain us, and like the psalmist, what better place for us to reside in the community and fellowship of our brothers 
and sisters in Christ all of the days of our lives. Jesus said, For this reason the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have the power to lay it down, and I have the power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. In his name, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, hallelujah, 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 amen. Children 
of the long sun through the waters sun through the flood sun through the fire put all through the blood sun
Christine, Dennis, Josh, Joyce, Kevin, Lee, Lynn, Lydia, Margaret, Naomi, Peggy, Pete, Ricky, Robert, Sally, Sarah Walker, Cheryl, Stephen, Tony, Tracy, and Virginia. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless Kale Godwin and Anna Reith Miller, who celebrated their birthdays. Bless Donnie and Lisa Pope, who will be celebrating their wedding anniversary this week. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we, and we pray with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Especially, we pray for Peggy Collier and for D'Angelo Cooper. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you have promised to hear what we ask in the name of your Son. Accept and fulfill our petitions, we pray, not as we ask in our ignorance, nor as we deserve in our sinfulness, but as you know and love us in your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The service continues on page 360 in the Book of Common Prayer. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought word and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not loved ourselves as we ought. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all of your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. My sisters and brothers in Christ, wherever you are, wherever you may be in this beloved community, to my brother in England, The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. And also with you. Amen.
A service continues on page 361 in the Book of Common Prayer. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give Him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death, he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name.
he stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension. We offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one body. Hallelujah! Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us, therefore let us keep the feast. Hallelujah! Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldst come unto my roof, but speak where only in my soul shall be here. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldst come unto my roof, but speak where only in my soul shall be here. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldst come unto my roof, but speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, is broken for me. The 
preserve my body and soul in everlasting life. Amen. An act of spiritual communion, let us pray. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. The service continues on page 365. Let us pray. Eternal God and Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send this now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ. And may the blessing of God Almighty the Father, His Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God. <laughs>